All right, let's go back to verse 6. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, uh, excuse me, I already read that part. Now let's look at verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, all right, here we go, the fourth seal. Man, is this going to get worse, Pastor? Yeah, this is going to be really bad. I Notice that it says right here, I heard the voice of the fourth beast. So now the fourth cherubim is introducing the fourth beast, I, the, four, the fourth horseman. Come and see. So the fourth cherubim introduces the fourth horseman. Look at this. And I looked, and behold, a what? Pale, Pale horse. Okay, this, it's like as if the horse is about to drop dead. No kidding. Why? Because look at these two. People are starving to death here. That means the ration that they're going by is definitely not up. They're about to drop dead. Not only that, they, ha they went through war. So death is coming out. And his name that sat on him was death. So death is coming out. Now, notice right here that death is coming out. And when he comes out, he's going to slaughter a lot of people. Okay, why isn't this working? Oh, green is not working. No, okay. I want to draw it green for a reason, actually. That's why. Okay, so forget it. I'll just have to use blue. I was going to show you something with, interesting with green, but forget it. All right, so death is going to come out. And when death comes out over here, a lot of people are going to die. Now, why is that? Because when he comes out, keep reading right here. It says, the next part, And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with what? Look back at verse 4. War kills them with what? Sword. That's why death is coming out, because of this guy. Let's go back to verse 8. To kill with sword and with what? Hunger. Hunger. What does that match up with? Verse 5. Famine. See? So you got to realize when death is coming, it's because of these two guys. Yeah. This is going to be scary. Let's keep reading right here. Notice it says, and with what? Death. death. So death itself is going to do it. So this is bad. You know what that means? That means when death is coming out, people are going to die here, sword. People are going to die here with hunger, and they don't catch a break. Himself, death, is going to kill them as well. Yeah. So just because you got people, if you live through the famine, you didn't escape it. Yeah. When this fourth horseman comes out, he'll wipe out the rest. Right. That's millions, man. Yeah. Millions and millions and millions dying. And notice the last part, and with the beasts of the earth. You know what that part is? What's after death? That's hell. Because look back at verse 8. The pale horse, right? His name that sat on him was death. But after death, notice what it says. And hell followed with him. This is not the fifth seal. We're in fourth seal. In the fourth seal, you got two terrors. Two terrors in the fourth seal, you got to realize. Okay, what is this, Pastor? You're scaring me. Yeah, that's why you should get saved in Jesus Christ right now if I were you, okay? If I were you, i get saved in Jesus Christ right now. Death comes out, but then his buddy is going to come along after him. And he said, yeah, not good enough. I'm coming out too. So then hell comes out. And when hell comes out over here, he is going to wipe out the other people. Okay, I lived, I, I lived through this. I'm fine. No, death is going to take the rest. Okay, I lived through death. I'm fine. No, hell is coming out. When hell comes out, wait, you're telling me, Pastor, there's going to be hell on earth? Absolutely right. That's really correct. Now, think about this, is that where is hell? Hell is below our earth. Right. The closest opening you're ever going to get to hell is that when that volcano erupts and goes, because you know where all that lava comes from? The center of the earth, that the core of the earth, that's where hell is. The Bible says hell is the heart of the earth. Yeah. Wait, then you're going to say there's going to be a huge eruption? There's going to be some kind of huge eruption out of nowhere. And then CNN, CBS is going to go over the volcano and say, Oh my, oh my, and they'll take God's name in vain. Oh my gee, oh my gee, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh, this is horrible, this is horrifying. 
Man, you see that? You see that? Man, this is horrifying right there. Cooper, you see that? Yeah, I'm, I'm right over here. I'm right over here or, over the volcano. And what is that? There's some kind of, there's fire coming out. There's some creature coming out. Oh, my God! Cooper, Cooper, you still there? Cooper, Anderson Cooper, hello. What's going on? You might say, what are you talking about, Pastor? Because when hell followed death at verse 8, let's keep reading the last part of verse 8. The last part of verse 8 says, and with death, right? Yeah. So after death has to be hell then. Yeah. What, fall, what is hell? And with the what? There are creatures coming out. So then, you're going to see some of these horrifying creatures come out of nowhere. And these horrifying creatures, whatever they're going to look like, they're going to come out of nowhere, and then they're going to kill a lot of people. They're going to be killing a lot of people over here. So they will come out of hell, and then they're going to ravage and then destroy the remaining people. Another thing that you can think about is uh, another time you would think about hell opening up would be an earthquake where the Bible talks about Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. The earth opened up and they fell into hell. Sodom, the, uh, where it sunk down and then hell took care of it. The Bible says that it was eternal hell fire that Sodom and Gomorrah was gobbled up in. Well, how did they get that from below? That means, see... It was like such a huge eruption from underneath where it rained down upon them and then totally consumed them and brought them down, sunk under. So then the only thing that you can think about is that it's going to be a huge earthquake. So then, what did the Bible say? Go back to Matthew 24. Go to Matthew 24. So when you hear about these earthquakes getting worse and worse, and California would be a perfect place for hell to open up with all the sinners running around, right? I mean, San Francisco is close to Sodom and Gomorrah as it is, and Dinky, that's where hell is, that's where all the earthquakes are happening. Maybe God's pre prepared to repeat hell again because of Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm, strange stuff. Look at Matthew 24. So, gentlemen, you're going to have to turn off the Mevo for like five minutes and let it rest if you want to connect it, if, if that's why you're having trouble. You have to like turn off. Is it that one? Okay, then. Did you look at the other room? They may have unplugged it. Yeah, I just came back from there a moment ago. Okay, then. They unplugged it? or? No, it's still in there. Okay, then. Something's wrong. Okay. Well, anyway, let's continue back to our main text. No, no. It's crazy stuff. Let's keep reading verse 7. So we read nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. That's the war, right? Look at the next part. And there shall be what? Famines. There you go. The third horseman. It's going in order. And what? Pestilences. Wow, there's your death right there coming in. And what? Earthquakes. That could match right here. In diverse places everywhere. Hmm. Here's another interesting thing. Another time you can, you want to get close to hell is going to have to be where you get the lowest part of the ocean. And a lot of people don't go really down there below, but they tell you that when you go deeper, deeper down the ocean, it's darker and darker. And not only that, the creatures look more weird and more weird. Hell is a place of what? Outer darkness. How about that? The lowest level in the world, I mean, it ha it's like at the bottom of the ocean, so to speak, and that's the closest to hell. Think about that. Very interesting. Jonah was swallowed by a whale, right? But he says when he went down under the ocean, he went where? He went down to hell, he mentioned as well. Oh, there may be. So then, in other words, it might come out of the ocean, too. Something might just fly out of the ocean out of nowhere. And then here they are, the submarines. They're like saying, what is that? Is that a megalodon? No, that's just sci-fi stuff. You're looking at it. Ah, it's going to swallow us. And then submarine. Hey, what's going on? Hello? 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 
shoot off the missile, shoot off the missiles. And then all these creatures come out of the ocean and then just... Air, aircraft carriers, you know, sinking down. Creatures coming out of the ocean. And then, and then the atheist will say, well, I don't believe in a Bible, so these are evolved creatures yeah, that we just didn't see before, you know. They always have a scientific, <laughs> rational explanation for things. So you'll notice right here that these creatures, they're just going to, if you're going to think about any place where there are possible openings of hell, then think about how bad it's going to be. Think about the earthquakes, think about the eruption of volcanoes, and think about the bottom of the oceans. The Bermuda Triangle, there were always uh, reports of ships and planes and people being lost over there at that area. And what's interesting is that in the Bermuda Triangle area, they saw pyramids down there, which is pretty interesting, believe it or not. So this is just crazy stuff. Why? The sons of God, demonic beings, they're, they're in hell. Wow, this is nuts. Okay, so look at verse 8, what Jesus says in Matthew 24, verse 8. Oh, by the way, this is, uh, all these are just the beginning of sorrows. <laughs> what? This is the end of the world. No, Jesus said at verse 6, the end is not yet. This is not the end of the world. The end is not even yet. Can you imagine how crazy this is going to be? Crazy. You know what's also interesting is that, so, if the tribulation is seven years long, then this makes a lot more sense where if this is just the beginning of sorrows, when we hit the middle of the tribulation, oh my. When we hit that middle of the tribulation then, you're going to go, oh my, because that man of sin, that antichrist, he resurrects, sets up the abomination of desolation in Jerusalem because look at verse 8. It says all these are the beginning of sorrows, right? And those are your four seals. Then look at verse 15. When he therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. Uh, Whoso readeth, let him understand. Wait a minute, that's the Antichrist with his abomination of desolation right. at the, three, the last three and a half year of tribulation. Wait a minute, then notice what happens before that. It's what? These. Do you know how bad this is going to be then? This is horrifying nightmare then. So this is supposed to be just the beginning of sorrows. Because you know what's after this? It's called, notice right here, the Great Tribulation. Look at verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. There's your nightmare here. So when we're covering Revelation 6, this is not the complete nightmare. When we hit to 13 and the other chapters, you ain't seen nothing yet. Dude, <laughs> you don't want to be here. We're going to go through the tribulation. I want to go through the tribulation. Oh. More power to you. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> you, all, you all want to huddle together in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and then uh, keep your church running and survive the tribulation, you know, and steal sheep from IFB churches so that you can have a bunch of post tribbers ready to fight through the tribulation. My goodness, more power to you. You're lucky to go through this if you survive this. You're lucky if you survive this. And you're lucky to survive this. And you're lucky to survive this one. And then right over here, you're not going to be as so lucky, okay? This is just a nightmare. Now let's go back to Revelation 6. Revelation chapter 6. The pre-trib rapture, I am totally against it. That's my passion. I'm going to really disprove this pre-trib rapture. you got a weird mind. It's like as if you want this. You want this so bad, you know? Look at Revelation chapter 6. Okay, the last part of verse 8 says, and with the beasts of the earth, right? So, in order for me to prove it, rather than just me stating it, look at Isaiah 28, Isaiah 28. 
Look at that. Weird creatures come from hell. You didn't know that? Yeah, look at the book of Isaiah. And then uh, we'll look at chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28. This is their covenant with death and hell. So I'm going to explain this one and then the beasts of the earth, okay? So actually, let's cover the beasts of the earth first. So keep your hand on Isaiah 28 and go to Isaiah 34. Keep your hand on Isaiah 28, we'll go to Isaiah 34. So let's cover the beasts of the earth first, and then I'm going to show you this interesting agreement with death and hell. You thought this was interesting enough? I'm going to show you more. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 34. Okay, let's look at this beast of the earth. The Bible says in verse 10, It shall not be quenched day nor night, uh, night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. Wait, what is that then? That's hell, right? That matches with Revelation 14. The smoke of their torment ascendeth up uh, forever and ever. So this is hell. But look at this. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. But the what? Cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. Uh, look at verse 13. And thorns shall come up in her palaces. Nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof, and it shall be, see this hell, shall be an habitation of what? Dragons and a court for owls. That's why Satanists have an infatuation with owls and dragons. Harry Potter, witches, have an infatuation with owls and dragons. That's satanic. That's, that's hell. That's hell's creatures. Verse 14, the wild what? Beasts. Remember Revelation? It says the beasts of the earth are going to come out. See? Shall meet with the wild beasts of the island. Oh, look at that. So it's not so these creatures are going to come out of the desert somewhere, and they're going to come out of the ocean somewhere, out of the island. And the satyr shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. This makes a lot of sense then at verse 14. Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, they went to one of the drops of hell, Sodom and Gomorrah, and that's in a desert area, right? Uh, the Bermuda Triangle and then uh, the lowest level of the ocean, Jonah swallowed by a whale close to the opening of hell. So it's interesting that verse 14 talks about these demonic creatures from those areas where there were possible openings of hell. See how scripture lines up with a lot of things? It just clicks, really. Clicks, really. And the satyr shall cry to his fellow, the screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. So this is so messed up. By the way, it's interesting. These are winged creatures, right? You know what? The, Jesus talked about the parable of the fowls of the air coming down and eating the seed. What did Jesus say they were? They were devils. That was Satan. If you really doubt me, go to Revelation 18. It plainly says that Babylon is a home in a cage yeah. of every foul spirit, yeah. devils, and what? Fowls of the air. Yeah. Birds, unclean Bird. birds. Unclean birds. Yep. Crazy, crazy. All right, let me show you something even more interesting than this. Go to